It's Ramblin' Bob here again. So one of the scribers had mentioned a power station that I have not heard of and uh, asked me to take a look at it. And you know what? A power station that I haven't heard of, I'm all in. Hold my Dr. Pepper. All right, I'm over by the computer here. I got it all set in. <laughs> just messing with you. Okay, just, uh, it's Van Powers. I, I never even heard of it yet. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to see. Now, this is going to be my first look at it. I've heard nothing about this power station or this company. I thought Vans was like a shoe. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm an old I'm an old fart. So, uh, okay. So, uh, Vans Power. Uh, my internet is obviously working a little bit on the slow side here. Uh, okay, let's see. There's no picture. Guys, let me try it again. Let me refresh here. Maybe it's my internet. All right. Oh, oh hey, there we go. Okay, so we have a box that popped up, and it's called the Van Powers Super Power Pro. Now, like I said, this is the first time I've ever seen or heard of this model. Um, and I love looking at new technology. This solar power is an addiction of mine. I really have fun with it. It's my new hobby in life. And if you guys want to come along for the ride and listen to me ramble about it, cool. Grab a Dr. Pepper, sit down, and here we go. Okay, so right off the bat, I see a $1,000 price tag. So a $1,000 price tag is definitely a mid-grade model that should have about 2,000 watts or so. Yep, here, 2,096 um, watt hours of power with a 2000 watt inverter so it's very very simple to the uh, Pecron E2000 or the Accutel uh, P2001 so I would consider this a mid-grade system anything more than about oh I want to say maybe five Th then it starts getting up into the quote-unquote big boy category to where you can have a lot of power and then you get into the super big boy if you will with those rack systems where you can put 20 30 thousand watt hours like my good pal will prouse over there on his channel and he has taught me so much about this uh solar power that i haven't burned down anything yet so thank you will <laughs> okay so uh 2096 watt hours we're going to round that up to 2100 watt hours just so easy to remember or jot down if you want to take notes um so you're looking at probably about 40, about 48, 49 cents per watt hour. So you're under that 50 cents per watt hour mark right off the bat. For me, positive. Good job. Uh, that's very low com com uh, compared to most of the competitors. I think the only one that comes close that I can think of uh, that's mainstream, I think, is Pecron. If Pecron is mainstream. Okay, so we're going to go down and we're for, oh, let's let's uh, you know what let's take a look at the pictures, and we'll see. It's a very very simplistic looking front. Um, it has all the. This looks like. Can I get this bigger here? There we go. Okay, so why does it say drop? Okay, it's like a video game. All right, so you have these three outlets here. I believe these are 12 volt, and then you have the USBs. Uh, they look all USB Cs in order, uh, you know, to the picture to me. So uh, we'll know that obviously when we look at the, uh, oh I see you can move it around, um, when I look at the specs later on. So uh, as the screen you have a power button right here, I'll try to use this part of the mouse, power button here, here's your AC on button, and then here's your reset button, so that's obviously your, you know when, when, you, uh, when you push it too hard you need to hit the reset button, and then you have your DC. So USB and DC are obviously on one circuit. That's a plus and a minus, guys. I like systems that have everything separate. And the reason for that is, is why not? If you're not using it, why have it on, right? If you're not going to use the DC or the, um, uh, the USB-C, why have it on? You know what I mean? Even, even if it doesn't use any power, why, ha uh, why have it on? So I would like to have seen uh, a separate button for the USB and the DC. But that really doesn't make uh, much... Uh, uh, much negativity if you will uh the one thing i noticed on this picture here now is all the ac adapters and i believe this is the charging i think 13.5 volts 10 amps th wait 13.5 volts why is that low um okay so th th here's your i don't know why some are upwards and boy they're all oh i see okay so I, I my brain didn't click right away of why these are all different configurations think about if you guys had those power bricks you know those little power bricks that you you, you can never fit in here because you can't fit them you know the uh, like you can't put two next to each other so one would be facing this way one would be facing that way one would be facing up and one would be facing down very smart idea it just looks really weird that all these are facing uh, 
completely different directions. Uh, but you know what? When you think about it, when you think about it, that's actually pretty in, uh, s- simplistic and ingenious. I do like the little rubber bumper here and the wheels and the built-in little handle cart trolley thing. That's nice, guys, because for some people, you know, this is probably a 50-pound machine, maybe 48 to 50 pounds. You know, that's a lot to carry for some folks. And, and you know, and if you have to carry it far, like, you know, say you were going all the way, like, you know, a block or two, you know, uh, who knows where you're going to use this thing, you know, a, a festival, a, a flea market, you know, you have to carry that 50 pounds, you know, a block or two. That's a long way to go. So having a built-in little uh, uh, trolley, if you will, I, I think that's a very nice touch. Um, I wish the handle would kind of go inside the machine. But I'm okay with it sticking up. But it would be real nice cosmetically if the handle went all the way down inside the machine. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at the other side. And now you have the other side, which are all the uh, mass inputs. Wow, this looks like a... I think this is a... What says 20 amp... I wish these were bigger so I could read them. I'll I'll see them in the specs here. This looks like the ground. I'm going to use the bottom part of the... uh, Because the drop button will not go away. Um, maybe I shake it. Nope. Okay. So th- this is the the obviously the, the maybe a warning thing or something. I don't know what that is. This is a ground. It says this is a 110 volt standard AC receptacle uh, power adapter. This is, looks like an XT60. It looks like 60 volts at 10 amps. I assume, and it's only an assumption so far, that this is a up to 60 volts 10 amps because you know to try to find something that's exactly 60 volts, I don't know. Or possibly, you know what, maybe it has a brick charger and that's exactly 60 volts. We'll have to wait and see. And then this says 20, uh, looks like 20 amp max. So uh, right off the bat, I have to be honest, guys. It's just a personal preference. I personally do not like systems where these uh, plugs are on the side. I like, I think I just made a video about it too. Uh, talking about it i do not like having to search on the side of it like say you put this in a closet or you put this in uh you know just somewhere that's a tight area there and it's it happens to be less dimly lit obviously than the rest of the the house or the rv the van or whatever uh you can't see these very good guys you can't and when they're on the front you have a much better chance of seeing this port to plug it in so uh for, for me that's kind of a little down uh, a, a downgrade, if you will. I don't know what. Oh, I like the light though. If if, if that's a like a luminescence light, I, I'm all for guys. You know the cars out there, all those. I I, I call them. Uh, um, uh, they, boy, they had a TV show. Uh, what do they call that? Um, the pimp my ride. I I like that. Boy, they used to make an old Cadillac look awesome. They used to look the old Cutlasses and the old uh, um, just all of them. Oh my gosh, all the old cars, the Monte Carlos. They, they just look really neat with all the fancy stuff on it. So this is the pimp my ride of this machine, uh, according to my opinion. <laughs> so you literally have ground effects on uh, a power station. And that was, if you remember that video that I just made, ironically, uh, that's my timing. I got pretty good timing. I wanted some lights to kind of illuminate the front of the whole system on that pec rod. And look at that, there's a light on the ground. So we're, we're halfway there, right? So at least the idea is kind of out there. Um, yeah, you know, it does look kind of neat. Uh, if, if this whole thing, I, I'm assuming that just this section is a screen, uh, but that's a very large screen, uh, depending on how big this power station is. That is a very large, uh, very easily uh, uh, viewable screen if you have, you know, trouble seeing things in the dark or something. I mean, these numbers have to be, you know, uh, very, very large. Okay, the next one is, which is the last one. Now, this is what's in the box. Okay, so you have the power station, of course. That's the 2100 watt-hour power station. You have the accessory pouch. The accessory pouches are nice, guys. I mean, if you look at all this stuff right here, you got to carry all that, right? So if you throw it in a pouch like that, uh, it, that's very, very cool. And that way you don't lose these darn cables because, you know, you really need it. Um, okay, so this is a obviously a... Uh, a, a charging brick that's inside the system because that's just an AC cable. If you lose this, guys, you can grab just about anyone on the market. Make sure it's thick one, though. You know, heavy-duty, a lot of cable in there. Don't get a skinny, scrawny one because, you know, you'll burn it up. It'll uh, Usually an easy way to tell is when you use a cable like this, if it gets warm, if, if you uh, touch like, like here or here and it's too warm, that's your dead giveaway because heat will start on fire, obviously. That's the concept of heat. Uh, here's your MC4s to your XT60. So 
if that XT60 goes in there and it says 60 volts, I'm assuming now that it says um, up to 60 volts, unless it says XT60. We have to wait for either a, a better picture down on the bottom or a better explanation in the specs. Here's your XT60 to your car charger outlet. Very simplistic. Plug it in. You're, you're good to go. This is pretty nice, guys. So this all has one, two, three, four USBs. I'm going to assume until we get down there that this is a 100 watt output, a 100 watt output, and then these are probably 18s. Now the nice thing about it is they actually give you these little adapters. I guarantee you're going to lose these. These are awfully tiny, guys. This adapts a USB-C outlet into a Grandpa USB. A. That's the one we all first started with, with uh, USB. It's probably going to be a quick charge then, it'd be an 18-watt uh, quick charge. Your warranty card, it says 24-month warranty here, so you got a two-year warranty on this bad boy. All right, we're going to keep going. We're going to read this stuff here. 2,000-watt AC output. So that's pretty much the same as the Occutel that I have and the Pecoron E2000 LFP that I have uh, with 3,000-watt surge. If it can really handle 3,000 watt surge, that's awesome. Uh, my my Pecron cannot go uh, the, uh, much more than the surge. Uh, I'm sorry, um, the output of 2,000 watts up to the rated 4,000 or whatever it is uh, for more than a second. So just because something says it has a high surge value doesn't mean it can withstand that for a long period of time. So just always use this as a last resort, guys. You don't want to surge anything unless you have to uh, unless it's a very quick you know surge and then it you know comes back down kind of like starting a motor kind of thing your battery goes through hell and back to start that engine I mean you're pulling oh my gosh a thousand a thousand fifteen hundred watts possibly you know 50 amps 80 cold cranking you're putting a lot of power and stress on that battery which is why if you keep cranking a battery you will no longer have a battery so uh, let's see, compatible with more devices, blah, blah, blah. Grid flow and dual charge technology charge from 0 to 80% in just one hour. Guys, I never liked this rating. I don't know. I'm an old guy. Um, when you say 0 to 80, right away in my mind, I, re I remember Apple, the, uh, the iPod, the uh, iPhones. They have where you charge a battery extremely quickly but the last 20% takes what seems forever. I mean, it, it could take an hour to get 0 to 80 and then possibly another hour. Oh, here, a half an hour. Okay, so uh, a half an hour more to get that last 20%. And that half an hour seems like forever. But I understand why is because uh, you you have to let, obviously, the energy you know calm down. You can't force energy in there all the way to the top. Those of you who saw that soda video that I made shows exactly why, because the soda will overspill that glass, and then you'll have energy spewing out everywhere. That's what happens to lithium-ion batteries when you push them too hard or too fast. They literally, like, pop and explode, and are very dangerous. Uh, Lithium-iron phosphate are much safer, but they can still be dangerous in their own way. So I, I, I don't like this one. Unless you, maybe if you're in a hurry, but being that I just saw the next one right here that says in 1.5, that's good marketing because they're letting you know honestly, look, you're going to get to 100% in an hour and a half. So if you really need 80%, take an hour, but it takes another 30 minutes if you want it full. So that's pretty decent marketing for, for what, what I read on, on their, their website here. Eight ways to recharge making power accessible anytime and anywhere. Um... So, let's see, USBs, AC, I can't even think of eight ways. Right? Oh, I, I suppose it's it's um, um, like one, two, three, four, no, one, two, but I'd have to wait, okay, <laughs> I'd have to wait and see. I, I, I think there's more than eight outputs here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you had six US uh, 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 AC outlets on the side. So, you know, that's uh, uh, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so I, uh, I have to wait. I have to wait and read the bottom. Convenient wheels and handle for easy portability. That's a wonderful function, guys. This is a very cool idea. I wish more power stations would incorporate that, this telescoping thing. It's awesome. And being that they have these little bumpers on the bottom, that means uh, it's not going to be weird. It's going to sit flat. And that way, if you have a uh, charging... Oh, there's probably the charging. Wait, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And probably a USB charge, uh, not USB, a wireless charger on top for the phone. Okay, I figured it out. 
Uh, so the, the, this uh, handle uh, uh, idea is really cool. There's a lot of power stations now that are starting to do that. I wish they had them. Like I said, if you're going to carry 50 pounds and you got to uh, walk a block or two, dude, that's a long walk with 50 pounds. Unless you're a big, you know, tough guy, then then obviously it'll be easy for you. But you know, for me, 50 pounds, a couple blocks, forget it. I'll take a, a taxi cab. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Smart app control for power at your fingertips. Very cool, guys. Now, the, the, there's a plus and a minus with apps, obviously, um, which is apps like to take your information from your phone. There's a lot of uh, security uh, problems with apps. However, on the other side of that, you have control at your fingertips so you can charge something or turn something on from the other room. That's nice. Or outside the RV if you were fishing and you were next to your van or your RV or whatever. Uh, that's nice. Um, but I noticed this right away here. It's highly recommended that you upgrade the firmware to the latest version to get the best user experience upon receiving the power station. Okay, so that means obviously the, they have a ton of them in a warehouse and they have uh, new firmwares come up all the time. I have I have a friend that works on the uh, um, the Blue Eddy stream. His name is Tim. Hi, Tim, if you're listening and watching. Um, he is a Apple nut. He loves Apple iPhones. <laughs> And he is addicted to firmware updates. It's one of his favorite things. And we always kind of give him, uh, you know, give him a little bit of heat for that because he's always on there uh, updating the firmware. But on the other side of it, you know, when you update a firmware, sometimes you get really, really cool features that are not there originally. Or if you have a weird thing that, you know, either doesn't work or it's not 100%, uh, um, you know, like a finished product kind of thing. You know, if you remember, Pecron had that 65 uh, watt USB-C output and a simple firmware would have updated that to 20 volts at 5 amps and it would have been done in literally probably 30 seconds maybe a minute but uh, having an app is pretty cool it has its drawbacks but it's pretty cool um, I only have one system right now the EB3A by Blue Eddy that has an app and I, I'll tell you what I like it because I can at my fingertips I can see exactly how much power is going into it or out of it at literally the push of a button that's cool. So I don't have to walk all the way in the back room or in the back of the RV and see where my system is. I actually have a security camera. For those who have been following the channel, remember, uh, it points at the power stations that I have. And that way I can go back or see live uh, view of the security system. But let's be honest, why buy a whole security system when you can have the app? Okay, so that's just my opinion. So you have eco-friendly and cost-effective. The eco-friendly is kind of like me, you know. I mean, uh, lithium is. It, uh, if you research how they get lithium, it, it's, it's a little, it's, it's a little destructive. Uh, you have PICC insurance protection, uh, so that's nice. That's the first time I've ever seen uh, some insurance protection that's actually on a power station that I've seen. There's probably a bunch out there I haven't seen it yet. So as I said, this is a first look, and this is more like an off-the-cuff kind of look and that way you get more of a, a, a like an honest kind of um, uh, non-scripted kind of you know review uh, first look of what I think as far as uh, uh, my, my opinion which is definitely not professional it's just my opinion okay so here's a video we're not gonna watch that that's theirs all right so here um, let's see Th this is pretty brave to put other people's uh, here you got uh, EcoFlow, Anchor, Blue Eddy, Jackery, and Vans. To put other people's <laughs> copyrighted pictures on your website, that's, that's pretty bold, guys. Usually they cross out the names, but we all know from the systems what they are. But yeah, this, this if I had a uh, website, guys, I would not do that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty bold step. But I I at least it's, it's, they're straightforward, but I, I, hopefully they have the okay to do that. Um, okay, so here you got Lithium... Oh, now here's the okay. So, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries and MCM. So you got lithium uh, ion batteries on the smaller version, which is the 1500 probably, and then the 2000 is the one we're looking at. I believe has the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Jackery is is famous for their lithium ion, their lipo batteries. Um, this is now this says it has two kinds of batteries in here. Lithium iron phosphate and lithium ion. Oh yeah, because that, that's the old system. That, that might have had it. Uh, lithium iron phosphate and uh, lipo batteries. Okay, so it kind of gives you an idea of all the power. Boy, it's, it's pretty in-depth here, guys. It's pretty in-depth. 
let me uh, let me see what it says here. Uh, 1,440 watt hours, and then 2,096. So we're obviously on this side looking at this one. So about 2,100 watt hours. Uh, cycle life, 3,000 cycles to 60%. Guys, this number is the lowest percent that I've ever seen rated on a power station. Just my opinion, remember. I do not like when a company um, does the, their, their rating to anything other than 80% because most power companies, uh, power station companies, rate their systems to 80%. Now, if uh, like, be, being that they have 3,000 cycles to 60%, I have no idea, uh, you know, what that is to 80%. I, it, it doesn't clearly say. So maybe it'll say down in the specs, but this I, I, I'm not a fan of. I, I don't like that. Uh, rated output power is 2,000 watts. Recharge time is 60 minutes, and it says to 80%. So I'm okay with that because it's clear. I like stuff clearly posted so you have an idea of what you're buying. 1,800-watt um, max from the wall. That's a monster I mean, uh, hopefully you can dial that back a little bit, guys, because sometimes a lot of people don't remember, uh, or, or you know, sometimes they just you know f f uh, simply forget that you only have so many out uh, uh, watts in an outlet in your house, and if you go over like an average rated outlet in a house is 1,650 watts output, uh, and, unless you have a 20 amp circuit. So, just something to remember if if you already have something plugged in that that circuit. Uh, you know, downstairs or whatever, or in the same room, and you go plug in this thing in, and you're ready, you know, say 400 watts, 500 watts in the same circuit, this will push that right over that, you know, that 2,000 watt, and you'll probably pop that circuit. So I do like power stations where you can dial this back. I like that. I like that a lot. 16 amps, I mean, they're, they're, they're pushing full full power out of there. Most of them, uh, matter of fact, everyone that I have, it stops at 15 amps. And I like that because it gives you a little bit more um, leeway even though I like the power input it gives you a little bit more uh, leeway for the power that you're using from that uh, outlet um, let's see like I'll give you a prime example my, my E uh, what is it uh, the EU 2000 Honda generator I have it, it maxes out at 1800 watts but it's rated for 1650 watts so I would rather charge that at 1650 watts rather than force the system to go any faster if uh if that kind of makes sense to you. Solar input, 1,800 watts. Awesome. Guys, if you could get 1,800 watts of solar in that little box right there, that is huge. That is huge. Uh, at, at 10 amps, 60 to 160 volts. Now, guys, this is high, okay? Um, I, I, I like it this high, but remember, this is very dangerous when you go that high a voltage because anything past 48 volts can literally go through your skin and straight to your heart. It has not happened many times, guys, but it can happen. And the higher the voltage, the easier and less resistance your skin has to that voltage, and it goes right through. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, max via AC is 600 watts. Um... But it kind of doesn't make sense, maybe. Is that 1,800 watts from the wall and six? Oh, I see. Okay, so 1,800 watts from the wall and... Uh, no, wait. Oh, yeah, okay, here. I'm sorry. Uh, 1,800 watts from the wall and 600 watts from the solar input. Okay, it was just weird how they wrote it there. Maybe they should have a little comma there. You never know. Uh, or even uh, a space between these two, so you can see. So you got 600 watts of input from 12 to uh, 60 volts. That makes better sense. Okay. Uh, and then you have 60 to 160 voltage. That's a very wide span. So that's basically everywhere in your house. Uh, no 220, of course. Uh, but not, not, now this makes sense. This makes sense. So basically you can have a very cheap panel, uh, you know, a little 12 volt panel all the way up to uh, either one very large panel, you know, up to about 550 watts. Big super, you know, like a big... Uh, uh, what is that called? A, a big piece of wood, a, a sheet, a sheet of wood, uh, or you can have a few uh, in series or parallel in between that. So now this makes sense. Okay. Um, you have two power delivery ports that are 100 watts and two power delivery ports that are 20 watts. I guess they were 18, but they're 20. So it's two more than I thought. Uh, GPS, guys. Now this, this is, a, this is an interesting thing. A GPS so you can find your dang system. Guys, that's cool. Say somebody stole your box at a campground, and you just walk over to their, their little cabin or their RV and go, excuse me, can I have my box back? 
like, wow, that's cool. That's really cool. You can locate your device if that's what that means. I, th that's a huge plus. I haven't seen that uh, yet, guys. The UPS, the uh, uninterruptible power supply, which means obviously you're going to hook to the grid and you have something important to it. The grid drops, boom, it keeps going, switches over. No, no, uh, no, no, uh, um, uh, no problem for the uh, power. There's no interruptions. There's no stoppage. There's no outage. Very cool. The built-in wheels, uh, the luggage handle, and the accessory pouch. Okay. So we're going to go down here. Now these th these are kind of deceiving in, in a way because uh, depending on uh, this isn't this isn't this is good. Uh, no, I guess not. So what I was thinking of, you know how they always show you like a TV and how many hours it can run? Well, who knows, you know, how many watts your TV is. So each each uh, each person's uh, TV would be different, of course, or usually. Okay, let's see. Tired of waiting for a full charge? Choose the Van Power Super Power Pro to avoid long waits so you can go camping at any time. With grid flow technology, the SPP... Uh, Oh, I guess that's Super Power Pro. The SPP can be charged to 80% in just one hour and one and to 100% in two hours. Okay, now, I have a problem with that, guys. If you remember up here, it says, uh, where did I see that bad boy? I think, yeah, right here. Okay. So here it clearly says charge to 100% in 1.5 hours. Okay. That's the 2000, right? Uh, let me see if that changes with that one. No, the only thing that changes is the money. Okay, so I have a feeling that uh, this one is the smaller one, but we don't know because it doesn't clearly say that. Up there it says 1.5 hours, guys, and down here it clearly said, uh, where was it? Uh, right here. Uh, where the heck did I see it? Um, okay, right here. 100% in two hours. So, oh, I okay, I, I take that back. Okay. Um, solar project. No, wait. Yeah, that's a half hour different. Boy, this is okay. It's just the, way, the, the either it's the way I'm reading it or the way it's written. Up there on the top, it says one and a half hours to 100 percent, and down here it says 100 percent in two hours. So that, uh, but 2400 watts. Wow, that's a lot of power to push in there. Holy cow! And then see here once again, guys. See this 1.5 to fully charge. So maybe it's 100 percent. Uh, from the outlet or the solar panel or a generator individually it takes two hours and then if you use both of them it takes 1.5 okay well, that makes sense then um, let's see um, competitor brands uh, this this I don't think is true um, here's the inside of the system guys so you have the uh, I think that what is 16850 cells they look like huge uh, uh, don't quote me on the, the the cell number. I'm always confused with those, but it, the, they look like really big uh, uh, AA batteries there. Um, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have a see-through power station like that. <laughs> would you guys like that? A big power station that you could see all the internals. I think that'd be easy to uh, to watch and see if you have a problem. You know, if if the fan's not spinning or something's you know being goofy, or if you get a spark ever, you you literally be able to see it. So, uh, what do you guys think about that? A see-through power station. Cool or not? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. Here's the little bad boy. Look at that. The wheels pop out. Um, these are probably plastic. Um, now, w w watch how you see how it rocks over the... Uh, well, it, 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 it sways over the rocks here. Let's do it again. See like that? So, yeah. I, I'd rather have bigger wheels than, you know, sh you know sh shuffling side to side. But it... it it got over it. Okay, so here's this. These are the ones I was talking about. Uh, the nice thing, at least they put the wattages here, guys. Because, you know, some companies will just throw, um, li like this one, a Tesla, five miles. Uh, but it says five miles plus. So, you know, th that, uh, you know, can get you at a gas station. But uh, sometimes they'll put a projector 16 hours and they won't put the wattage. So these, these are actually nicely displayed to where you can actually see. And then you can do the math yourself just to kind of see. So you have 2,100 um, uh, 2100 watt hours in here so like let's take your skillet here it's 1.1 to 2 the reason that there's two guys is obviously uh, you could you know a skillet doesn't go like um, you know all the time you, you know what I mean a drill can be lower high speed so uh, th these I, I do like as far as uh, how they have these written 
uh, Van Powers. I never heard of Van Powers, guys. All right, so here's close-ups on the ones that I uh, I, I wanted to see here. Um, okay, so you have oh, 60 volt, 10 amp max. Okay, and then this is 20 amp max overload. Okay, so that's an overload. That's a circuit. So if if the energy comes in too hot and it pops up and you hit this little bad boy, it's a circuit breaker, and then uh, that resets these receptacles here. Here's your ground. That's nice. A lot more power stations are putting grounds on there, guys. A lot of people don't even use them, but it is nice to have them, especially if you use a, a generator of any kind on a job site, guys. Um, by I, I'm pretty sure it's OSHA regulations. You have to have it grounded for safety, uh, you know, for insurance purposes, all that stuff. You use it at a house. Nobody cares. But if you go on a commercial property, guys, you have to have a system grounded for safety. So I, I do like seeing that on more and more power stations. You don't have to use it if you don't want. But I, I like it being there for an option. Um, here's your 120 uh, volt receptacles. Uh, that's nice. It's not 110. I believe these 120 uh, uh, volt outputs because it says. Uh, so it's probably adjustable as far as maybe the hertz and the, uh, the voltage because you know if you go to Japan or something like that uh, even though they have different receptacles you you have you can have it set on different uh, voltages and things and then you get in a little adapter to plug them in um, here's your car output times one 13 volt for six uh, now this says output guys output so that's actually kind of cool that you could actually uh, go from that and possibly charge 136 watts into a, a battery um, or you know charge it into another power station using it like a power dump that's kind of cool I like that's different um, if it's just a cigarette lighter okay hopefully it's a regulated output then it's the same as all the other ones um, let's see here's the close-up on those ones 200 watt power delivery ports uh, here's the 20s. I thought these were 18s on my first initial thought and then 136 watts total of three barrels uh, these are 5521. The number means 5.5 millimeter on this outer ring and 2.1 millimeter on this pin right here, just to give an idea of what that is. Okay, let's see. USB C. Okay, 100 watts. So it says 100 watts each. Now, hopefully, you can use those bad boys at the same time. You know, one thing I like uh, on, on this output, uh, not necessarily on this machine, uh, on an old power station I have, I have two power stations. I have the Energizer. I think it's the PS320 and the uh, Mylon 640. Uh, not very big power stations, but they have a thing called power delivery input output it's really neat that you can charge input of a hundred watts in a system and that way you can put a little extra you know energy in there to hurry up and charge those smaller systems uh, those are older systems of course but that that little um, feature or option or whatever guys I would like to see that on more power stations again you know it would it, it, I think it would be great to have just a little bit of power so you can trickle it in there from you know a uh, um, like say you have a very small little uh, battery bank right just a little dinky thing and you just want to dump another oh I don't know uh, 20 or 40 thousand uh, uh, amp hours into your power station and, you know that way you get a little just a little bit more power if you need it for an emergency I do like that power uh, delivery input output on the older systems uh, hopefully it just says output though but uh, I think it'd be nice if, if the company started doing that again. You know, it's, it's not much, just a little bit. All right, here's their, their solar panels, guys. Um, do yourself a favor. Do not set up solar panels like this, guys. This is, this is a terrible display because they're all aimed every dang which way possible. It looks like a puzzle. Uh, try to get your uh, panels as flat as you can. And don't put them so close together, guys, because obviously one's going to block the sun from the other one. So this this picture, guys, they should redo this picture. Spread these out. I know they're just displaying them, but, you know, look, I can't see half of these products because they're covered. I assume these three are the same, but I can't see this big bad boy back here because it's covered. I mean, if you want to display your, your products, you know, get, get them out there in the open so I can see it. All right, let's see. Oh, now here's the screen. Now this is cool. Um... This is a lot of little options on this little bad boy. So we're going to start right here. 
and we're going to work all the way around to the power ring. Let's do the power ring first and then go all the way around the outside. So the power ring basically is exactly what it is, 100% down to, I'm assuming 0%. Guys, don't take it that low unless you have to. Um, th this will obviously fill up, and then when it's full, your power ring is full, and then this will go to 100%. Okay, very simple, very simple. All right, so your amp up mode. I have no idea what that is. Okay, amp up mode. If anybody knows what that is, uh, feel free to tell me. Uh, here's your your PV max. So obviously, when your your uh, your uh, solar panels are in, here's your grid flow. Um, maybe these are all input ones. Yeah, and then here here's your cell network. It says four four G for your cell network. Uh, so it definitely has uh, uh, either Wi-Fi or its own telephone. Creepy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to wait and figure out what these are. Uh, but I, I believe these are all input ones. Um, nope, because here's input. Wow, yeah, so I don't know what the, Maybe these are faults, but these are faults. Yeah, wow, this is weird. Grid grid flow. Maybe that's like a UPS. Nope, UPS is down here. Guys, these are new to me. These are new to me. Uh, maybe that's the max amount of uh, solar amp up more. These four, I really, uh, other than this one... I kind of assume what that is. These, I don't really know what these are, guys. Grid flow. Maybe that is, you know, going through the grid into the device. I'll have to read up on these. Th these three things. Amp up mode, PV max, and grid flow. Uh, I, I got some learning to do too, right? Here's your power factor. I like that. If you're using something that has a horrible power factor, it lets you know that. That's cool. To give you an idea, if you use a heater or a light bulb, power factor is usually about... Uh, either 1.0 or what's known as 100% or very close to because they're very power efficient. The power that goes in gets converted and the power factor is just that, almost perfect. Okay, so as this number drops, less perfect. All right, so then you have the dis power button and the display on and off. So you have here the power button, simple, and then you have a little button or a little LED that pops on real quick and then this probably lights up telling you that your, your system is on. Here's your AC button, so this turns on your AC inverter right here. Again, you have a little green thing. They'll tell you when it's activated. And then you have your remaining time, which will be this bad boy over here, recharging time. I do like, guys, right off the bat, they do have three different meters here. Now, that's nice that you can actually see what the recharging time is separate from the input and output. Some power station screens are so small that they, they don't have all this fancy stuff. Um, I might... Uh, uh, Pecron E2000. Remember, I have to push the button, guys, to see that power factor. Uh, I have this one, but I don't have this one unless I uh, hit a button, and then it, uh, one of these will turn into a power factor, or the uh, um, the little parts on the side. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, AC on, so that obviously when it's plugged into the wall, this means it's charging. Okay, UPS ready. That means when you plug it in the wall and the UPS is ready to go as an un uninterruptible power supply, which means you could turn that on or off. That means it's ready to go and it'll protect your system in case there's an, 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 uh, um, an, an outage. Auto, off, disabled. I like that, guys. I like that. And it clearly says that. I'll give you a scenario that's horrible. So you go out, you, you buy $100 of steaks, you're having a family reunion, you, you got the grill going, you got all the propane going, or you're using your, your power station to, to use an electric grill, guys. Use gas grill. <laughs> or use a fire grill. Best tasting food. Use fire. Um, this will tell you that the steaks that you have in the cooler or possibly, uh, I don't recommend freezing steaks, but if, if you have the food in a freezer or the fridge, say say your beer, that's very important to people. My, my Dr. Pepper is very important to me. And if this auto shuts off and you don't know it and you came back from fishing and your system turned off, guess what happens to your $100 worth of steaks and your Dr. Peppers? Uh, you have warm Dr. Peppers, that's not a problem, but now your steaks are possibly even you know, partially cooked, being in a 100 to 110 degree box from the sun. Uh, so this is nice that it lets you know up front right away, hey, you know, this is disabled so it won't turn off on you. That's cool. Here's your Wi-Fi here. So you do have, okay, so you have a separate Wi-Fi. So this is your internet Wi-Fi, and then this is your cell network. Guys, you could probably, 
uh, like pay for a, 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 a phone network on this thing. These four, then I definitely have to research these four because these four are a little confusing for me. If you guys know what these are, feel free to comment in the, in, in the in down below. I'll be happy to read it and learn something myself. I'm always learning every day, believe me. I'm not a professional. I've said it a billion times. Here's a USB-C output right here, uh, which is the, the four USB-C ports, and then you have the adapters to go to A's. This is your DC output to let you know that the DC unit is on. Um, now, were, were they separate? Let me let me go back and look again here. Um, it just says output. Maybe they're separate, guys. I thought that was all on one button because if you look at the screen, yeah, I thought you just have AC out and DC out. Yeah, so I don't know why you would need a USB and a DC. Okay, well, there's two of them. I don't know why. Maybe they both pop on at the same time. That's possible. That's possible. Okay, your current output, obviously, this is what you're using. And here's your overload in case you have a problem. And it's obviously in watts. Uh, so this will go up to about 2,000. And then obviously past that, we don't know because we don't have the system to check and review it and test this uh, overload protection thing. Uh, or your surge capability. Your DC power button is just that. You push the button, the little green pops on, and then that activates all your DC stuff. Uh, here's your Wi-Fi reset button. First time for me, guys. Uh, you actually have a button that resets the Wi-Fi. So there's obviously either a built-in uh, Wi-Fi card in there and possibly an internet? For a phone, I mean, 4G. This has a lot of options that I'm not used to seeing. Uh, here's your current input. That's obviously the power that's coming in from all your sources at the same time. Uh, here, this lets you know that the fans are on and spinning. I like that, guys, because now you know. Usually, you can hear the fans. You don't need a fancy icon. But the more icons, the better. I want to know what my system is doing at all times. And that way, not only do I learn, but I'm always updated of what's going on in my system. Here's your sleep mode. That's kind of cool, guys. There's a sleep mode in this bad boy, which means it, it can probably either hibernate or sleep, and then when you hit the button on your phone, you could turn it back on. That's cool. That way you don't have to turn it 100% off. You can put it into a sleep mode. That's different for me. That's very unique. Uh, low temp warning. That means, guys, if it's too dang cold outside, try not to use it. Lithium ion batteries usually have a rating down to about negative 4 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is, Celsius. Sorry for the folks over the pond. Um, and lithium iron phosphate batteries usually have a temperature usability cutoff about 32. Now that I know is zero degrees Celsius. So just to give you an idea, uh, the low temp means uh, these are lithium iron phosphate, which means if it's under 32 degrees, that battery pack, uh, it'll let you know, and I don't know if there's a heater in there. It doesn't say it. Some battery stations and power packs have heaters that heat up the battery cells, and then they allow the energy to flow in. But because if you charge a battery pack that's cold, you actually damage the, the, the battery cells. A lot of people don't know that. Or if it's too hot, you can damage the battery cells. Imagine your car doing 150 miles an hour on the freeway, and then you just stomp on the gas. Your car's not going to like that unless it's a race car. So... That's kind of what it protects from the elements because uh, your car is super hot doing 150 miles an hour. Your engine is boiling. Um, okay, and then your high temp warning is just that. Your engine is boiling. When your battery cells get too hot, this pops on and shuts down the system for a protection. That way you don't wreck or disable your batteries. And then you have your air warning, guys. That means something went awry. So obviously in the app, it'll probably tell you what the error was. Uh, that way you can research it, or it's possible that these might blink on the screen. Some of the power stations that I have, this icon, let, like, uh, let, let's say this one. Say you overpowered the output of this, hard to do, but say you did, and uh, this would blink on my system, on, on a few of my systems. So that's, you know, a, a pretty good array of buttons. This stuff, I'm still, uh, I'm going to have to read the uh, instruction manual, guys. These are actually new options that I'm not familiar with though so the cell network I, I mean I know what it is I just don't know how it works on this power station the grid flow I think that's uh, you know like once the batteries are full it goes directly to the device through like a, a pass through or charge through uh, feature but they maybe they call it grid flow 
Uh, PV max, I don't know, and the amped up, I, I don't know what those mean. Um, uh, maybe it's getting too many amps, I don't know. Here's a nice couple, they're sitting there, they're having their drinks here, they're charging their phones, and uh, he's going to get ready to plug this in here. All right, let's see, eight ways to charge. Uh, you could charge your Super Power Pro or your SPP uh, with a wall outlet or solar panels, a car charging outlet, a generator, an EV, and more. With all these options, you can enjoy outdoors without worrying about running out of power. There's your inputs, guys, eight ways to recharge. So from solar panel, 2,400 watts. Guys, that's that's monstrous. That is a huge amount of solar. That's two full uh, arrays. That's two full arrays you can have hooked to that thing in parallel. That's a lot of power. I don't know if the amps will hold, but that's a lot of power for this little box. Holy cow. EV and solar up to 2,400 max. Generator and solar, 2,400 max. Car and solar, 2,040 watts max. That's a ton. This thing can drink electricity. Wow. Unbelievable. 1,800 from an EV that we can put in the back of your car and uh, you know, you, know, you know, but see here's what's nice too is you plug in from your EV that way when you uh, you know spent your what whatever you know 30 minutes to three hours sitting at, at one of those electric charge stations not for me yet guys um, you can uh, charge directly probably through your car right into this box and hurry up and get that done while you're waiting for your car to charge and then you know give it a couple I I, I don't even know what it costs maybe an extra dollar or 50 cents or a quarter for that uh, you know 1.8 kilowatts I don't know does anyone know how much a kilowatt is at those power stations I would never had electric cars so I don't know if you know how much uh, a, an average kilowatt is at those uh, charging stations please put it in the comment I'd love to learn I'd love to learn and then uh, 240 watts, uh, sorry, yeah, 240 watts max from the car. And then the wall outlet, 1,800. Guys, that's hot. I hope you can turn that down a little bit. It would be nice if you had like three, maybe a 600, a 1,200, and an 1,800 option. And that way you can slow that charging down. And if you charge slow because you don't need the power, your battery cells long-term will like you better. I promise. Um, it's kind of like... A, Kind of like beating up a car. If you drive it like a grandma, you'll have it 50 years. No offense to grandmas out there. And if you drive it like a school kid, you're going to have it for about a year or two because you're going to tear that engine up. And a generator is 1,800 watts. All right, so here's your app here. So your remote app control and lot connection. I think that's lot connection. IoT connection. Um, I don't know what that means. IoT connection. If you know what that means, let me know. Uh, oh, here, Internet of Things. Okay, I never heard that before, guys. The Internet of Things. The 4G Internet of Things hardware. Okay, so there's, yeah, there's a special hardware piece in there. Well, remember, I'm learning as I'm going here because I've never seen this system before. And it's, it, it's got some features in there that are really catching me off guard. A cool green energy uses, uh, uses, sorry, a cool green energy user deserves a cool app. With built-in GPS and 4G Internet of Things hardware, our companion app gives you remote control, theft protection. That's huge, guys. That's a big thing. Oh, boy, I just talked about that in a video recently. Status updates and access to advanced features. As long as you have a 4G signal, you can control your power station anywhere probably in the world. That is unbelievable. Look at this global position tracking. The RC battery switch, you turn it on and off the battery status prompt, and the sleep mode options. Guys, this little power station has a lot of options I have not seen. It has your recharge time, your time remaining here as far as what you're using, your input output, pretty cool. Uh, here's your modes, ambient light, battery location. That is monstrous, guys. Just imagine that story I just told you about. God forbid somebody would have come in your campsite and steal your power station, <coughs> excuse me, because you had it sitting outside and you went inside to uh, use the restroom or, or, you know, get something, and, you know, someone ran up and just ran off with it. You can literally hit a button and meet them at their, at, at their campsite by the time they get there. Th that alone is an awesome option, guys. That is really cool, really cool. And then your system, hopefully... W w now, one thing I like about the apps, guys, and I hope this has it. I don't know because I've never tried the app yet, obviously. Um, I like data recording, and what I mean by that is... Uh, basically a chart that gives you a uh, power input uh, meter kind of thing so you can actually see 
how much power I got at 12, 11, 1, 2, you know what I mean? So you can actually see uh, what your your uh, your solar panels are doing. Are they are they not working? Is one defective? And you won't really know that over time unless you have that um, uh, that chart. I love the chart idea. Uh, I don't like apps so much other than the firmware update and then this is cool, but I'm not a fan of uh, apps so much. A lot of people know that on this channel. Um, just a personal opinion. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, the SS or the SPP 2000 is equipped with Van Power's quality built battery management system that has passed multiple certification tests, guaranteeing a high level of safety, optimizing the battery's performance. The outer shell is shock resistant. That's cool, and the interior is reinforced against collisions, making the SPP 2000 a rugged and reliable outdoor companion. All right, and here's all your. Here's all your uh, your protections here. So you have overcharged protection, awesome. Overcurrent, which means if you're putting too much into the system, it'll let you know that and shut down. Overvoltage, guys, that's a very dangerous one. If you put if you put a solar panel into that bad boy and uh, uh, like an array, and say you have a 150 volt solar panel uh, array out there where you have like a bunch of them in series, obviously it's not going to take that, right? So it, it, it'll protect that. Also, it probably has, and I'm only guessing on this one, uh, polarity protection. It's not written here, but I'm going to assume it's in there. Uh, polarity protection is obviously some solar panel companies like to, I don't know, play games or be goofy. And they put the, uh, on the MC4s, they put this one positive and then that one positive. So it, it's, it's reversed. You know what I mean? Like the negative's over here, and normally it's over here. That's what uh, a reverse polarity is and uh, hopefully it has that um, if it has the overcharge uh, over voltage protection I'm assuming it has the polarity protection as well overcharge protection is going too fast shuts it down thermal protection guys that's hot and cold awesome short circuit protection awesome that way it won't you know destroy all the things you have it hooked up here's all your certifications and your classifications uh, and then here's your advanced battery management system, which is called the BMS for short. A lot of people just call it BMS. That way, if you ever hear BMS, now you know what they're they're uh, they're they're uh, re referring to. All right, so here, get ready of heavy. But this is really detailed. Get rid of heavy adapters. Say goodbye to the hot, bulky adapters. Uh, just a single AC unlocks a super fast charging um, power station. Make most of the AC DC conversion using. A Texas Instruments processor. I haven't heard that name in a long time, guys. That was a huge name when uh, Radio Shack was around, guys. I loved Texas Instruments. Had the the uh, calculators and all that stuff. Uh, had the computers. Texas Instruments was a was a, a, a big company when I was a kid. Uh, traditional power station. So basically, they're 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 making fun of the ones that have to have the brick. Guys, now this is a plus and a minus, okay? Some people will argue one way and some people will argue the other way. And I guarantee both of you are correct, both both sets of people, because it's what you want out of your power station. Now, the drawbacks of this one on the top, with the power inverter inside, the charging brick inside, you're causing this thing to heat up a little bit more to possibly a lot more, depending on the environment you're in. So that's a drawback, right? The plus is I have to carry this little dinky cable here. I like that. Now with the power adapter on the outside, the drawback is obviously you have to carry this huge power box. If you guys remember the lunch box, you have to carry that around with you all the time rather than this little dinky cord. But the plus is the heat and the fan in this little box here is pushing the hot air outside of your unit. That's the plus and minus, guys. So. I am literally on both sides of the table when it comes to that, both sides of the coin, because both sides have a very valid argument of which is better. I personally enjoy this, but as far as the heat, I enjoy this. So I, like I said, I'm on both sides of the coin. You have to pick a side because this power station will be for you, not for me. That's Don't let people, you know, this is better, this is better. This is when you have to make a decision for yourself. Do you want your system hotter here? Or do you want your, your uh, carrying load larger? So that's something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, okay, when it comes to home backup, off-grid living, and van life, with van powers, you'll always be prepared for any situation. All right, these bad boys are a big screen TV out in the middle off a laptop. 
Uh, I don't see the projector, but I'm assuming it's there somewhere. Uh, very cool. I have the same setup, guys. I can put a 12-foot uh, projection on the side of my RV. Awesome. And then there's the light. Now, this th this uh, certifies it, if you will. I like this. I like this. Hopefully, you can turn this off in the app, but I do like this. I like illuminated things. I'm going to call this the Pimp My Ride feature on this from MTV's Pimp My Ride to where you actually have ground effects. That's what they call neon ground effects, guys. Um, that you actually have neon ground effects on your power station. I, 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 I'm a little bit of a fan of that. I, I have to say I like that. Let me know in the comments if you like that or you don't. All right, so here's the here's the, 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 the panels that they give you with the system, or you have to buy them separately unless you buy them in a, in a pack. Um, not a fan of the power panels that look like this, the, the solar panels. Um, I don't like that traditional solar panel look. I mean, in all honesty, if the panels work, who cares? I'm a visual kind of guy. I, I like those all black ones because, A, they're harder to see at night. If people see a solar panel, like say you left this out in your camping area and you went to sleep because you thought, well, I'll leave it out there. I'll get it in the morning. Well, someone else is going to see it and they're going to get it that night. That's very possible. But if it's a complete black solar panel, you can't see them at night. So that's a plus be over a traditional looking solar panel. And these are very traditionally looking or they have, you know, those big uh, lines of the, the white going down. Like anyone, um, anyone that knows anything about uh, any kind of electricity or solar uh, panels know that that's a solar panel, right? And these are probably not cheap solar panels, guys. You know, I, I'll look up in a minute how much they are. And then that's the end of the, uh, if you want to call it a presentation here, I'm just kind of taking a first look at it here. Uh, this is definitely not a sponsored review. Uh, one of one of the the people, uh, one of the scribers had you know asked, "Hey, can I get your opinion on this model?" I said, "Absolutely." New power station. I ran right over, and I want to go see this thing for myself. I want to go see the, uh, the solar panels if we if we could take just a few more minutes here. Um, I want to see how much they cost. Uh, let's see here. So $268 for a 200-watt panel. Guys, that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, foldable panels usually are about $1.50 to $2 a watt, depending where you buy them, of course. Uh, but I've seen some companies go down to even a, a dollar a watt on foldable solar panels when they're on sale. So overall, $268 for 200 watts, it's not bad. It's like, you know, about, a, what, a buck 25 buck 30 a watt. I don't think that's bad at all. I think that's very respectable. Um, I, I just wish they were all solid black. I don't like this square look. It's just personal preference. Um, so they, I, I believe that's their biggest one. That's a 200 watt panel. Um, this is the what is this? The 100 watt panel here. It doesn't say. This looks like a smaller one, guys. That's pretty cool. It's got little USB things in there. Uh, one of my first ones had this. I think it was a, a, a Tishy Harry uh, a 100 watt panel. And I think it was, uh, it was probably giving me like 70 watts, 71 watts. But it had these neat little plugs here, guys, so you can go directly into your phone. That's cool. That's cool because you definitely can't put 100 watts into these little things. And if you can, holy cow, that's awesome. Because uh, a lot of older phones, you know, they don't accept 100 watts. Uh, up to 100 watts, but probably not 100 watts. Um, yeah, so they're, they're solar panels. Not a fan of the looks, guys. Um, I wish you had, the, like, the weight. Where's the weight? You guys have up. Oh, see, there's no there's no specs here. Let's let's click on this. Maybe I'm on the wrong page. There we go. Okay, so the color is black, but it, like I said, it, it does have. If I can make this bigger. Okay, I can't make it bigger, but I can I, I can throw it on the screen. Okay, that's all I can do. So I can put it up here. Um, so basically, uh, it's it, th those white outlines. Like I said, uh, a, a, a a bad person. Uh, or a person of, of bad thoughts or whatever would obviously know that's a solar panel and that could be missing by the time you wake up in the next morning. Uh, let's see, MC4. I see, uh, I, I'm sorry, IP65 waterproof rating. Um, that is a very, very weak as far as the rain, guys. That's basically a splash, so keep these out of the rain. Uh, it says protected from minor water exposure, and I mean minor. So basically, say you spill like a soda or something like that, uh, obviously clean it up and wipe it off. Um, but uh, that's a very quick splash of water and, and definitely no prolonged uh, moisture or uh, rain or something like that. 
Uh, but it, that looks like the biggest panel they have. Love the RB, guys. These little RBs. Look how happy she is. Love the RB. Um, I wish I could get these. This looks like a European version, but these are awesome. If we can get these more in the States, you know, it's, it's kind of like a sprinter and a uh, pro master had a baby and this popped out. This this is a really cool. I've seen these in Japan. Uh, China has a few. Um, these are really cool. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. Now they're nice and straight. You can see by the the looseness here, if you will, uh, they're, they're very flimsy. Uh, that's just a guess. Um, but that also gives you uh, adjustability if you're sitting on something like this where you have all these lumps of grass and stuff. So, you know, it's a plus and a minus. Usually what I do, guys, is if one person goes on this side and one person goes on this side and you kind of... Uh, like tug here and tug here you pull it apart it straightens it out a little bit better and that way you have a much better angle and if like if, if these little folds are long they could go over the panels possibly and stop production of electricity and if you have it like this this to me in my opinion guys another bad picture if you have it setting in front of grass like this guys do yourself a favor either rip this grass out or move it because this little grass right here will affect your solar input um, a, a, a panel is a mirror. If if something's in the way, you can't see yourself, right? Think think of a solar panel as your glasses. If you have one thing on your on your glasses that drives you crazy, well, one thing on a solar panel drives you crazy, and the and the power drops like a rock, really quick. All right, guys. Well, that was it. That was the Super Power Pro. What was it again? Uh, uh, Two thousand here. Uh, let me get this. This looks like it here. Power Pro Two Thousand. I gave you my honest opinion. This is just my opinion, guys. When I first saw it, I thought this was dual handles. <laughs> I was like, why do they have dual handles? But now, being that that's a handle that you can actually, you know, drag that down, I, I like that. I wish it was recessed into the machine, though. That would be a very clean look. Uh, like I said, I'm a visual guy. I, I, yeah, I've done a, a lot of concerts and things like that over the years. I do like uh, a very clean look. As you can see, it's very professional looking. It almost looks like now if, if they had a little baby cover for it, you'd never know what that is and you can go about your business. Like if you walk down the street like this business lady would and you have this, you know, somebody might want to take that from you. I always look at the possibility of the bad parts of life because it protects you from the bad parts of life if you think about it. So that's the internals here. You got the main board up here for the uh, inverters. Uh, looks like you have a fan here and a fan here. These are your cells. I think you're 16. 650s or I don't don't quote me on that. These things come in a bunch of different cells, like double A AA and triple A. Very cool, guys. Well, I, I have to admit, I was uh, thoroughly uh, impressed with some of the features on this Super Power Pro 2000 model, guys. If you want to take a look at it, feel free. Just give them my opinion. For the scriber that wanted me to take a look at this, uh, hopefully this helps you. If, if if this helps you decide whether it's a positive or negative. Um, I'm not linked to this company in any way, so I don't have any promo codes or anything. But uh, feel free to go check them out. Uh, I'll put the link to just vanpowers.net in the description. It's not linked to any affiliate uh, uh, or anything like that. It's just a link straight. Or you can just type in Super Power Pro 2000 and go to that website yourself and check it out. All right, guys. Well, Rambling Bob Reviews. I hope you guys travel safe. Be safe, and I'll see you again on Rambling Bob Reviews. Bye, guys.